Let's begin our study with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we're so thankful for the time that we have this morning, and we open our hearts and minds to you to be instructed. We pray for one another. We ask, Lord, that you can use us to your glory, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, so we struggled yesterday, you know, and I've been looking through trying to figure out why we didn't end up drawing a line of chapter 13 of Judges. And I don't know if something got lost that we drew something out. Because um, we spent a lot of time going through it in the past. So I'm still trying to figure out what uh, what happened there. But um, I did a few things. So I'm just uh, go here. So let's look at what we had been studying. <clears throat> so we know that we we must have a line of chapter three because there's a lot that happens, a lot of detail to just say. Well, this is a period of darkness without having a line. doesn't make any sense to me. And for some reason, we don't have a line, line drawn out. But then when we tried to look at this, we moved rather slowly, uh, maybe not at all. We spent a bit of time looking at um, the symbols in Manoah. And... <clears throat> program's doing something funny here. Just hang on. So, so we looked at the name of Manoah. And so what we had been doing with these names, it's obviously the meaning of it means rest. It's related to the name Noah. And so that would relate to um, the period preceding the 777 days, right? Or not preceding. I guess following the seven 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 days, because Noah is going to be the son of of um, Lamech, and Lamech is the seven seven seven, and we have uh, connected to Lamech. We have the one eighty seven and the sixty five. So we have all of these symbols together. I guess is the way that we would look at it. We would look at the sixty five, the one eighty seven, which is the two fifty two, and also the seven seven seven, and so. We have Manoah here. It relates to those symbols. Now, Noah, of course, is going to be uh, connected to the 120 years prophecy uh, that's going to connect to the flood. And I don't know why this is not working here. I'm trying to get rid of this. There we go. <clears throat> that's... Uh, So what I did with Manoah, um, so the other thing that we did is we have the name Rest. Um, and we had looked at the Hebrew number. So we're going to this here. Let me go here. This is Rest. So this is going to connect to Noah. We have this number here, 4497. 4495, pardon me. And that period... If we take that as a period of hours, right, which we had been doing, um, it would be 187 days and seven hours. So we can see the 187 is there. Um, and we have that connected with uh, that story of uh, Enoch and... Um, Methuselah and Lamech and, and Noah all are tied in there. And then we have the symbol of seven hours. So we have the 187 days, and then we have the seven hour symbol in this number. Now, when we look at Manoah as a name and we do the gematria, the sum is 52. The product is 21840. Now, what we've been doing is taking that as, um, just like we did with this one, we were taking that as hours. So if you take uh, 21840 and you divide it by 24, you get 910 days. Now, 
The only thing about 910 days is it's 13 times 70 that I can see. I don't know of any span of time in our lines that I've been able to match it to. Um, I think it's two years and uh, um, about, what is it, two years and Two years and about uh, 180 days, something like that. Depends how you count it. So th those are the symbols that we have with Manoa. Now, um, I, I looked at this number here, and the only thing that I could see here that would uh, – if I took this as just days, so if I took this product and used it as a span of days, it's the time from uh, when I was born to that November 24th, uh, 2022 date, the Thanksgiving. So that's the number of days between the day that I was born and that date. I don't know if that's significant in this line. That one may just be a coincidence. Um, so we're going to place this story then of Manoa uh, with the period of darkness. And the darkness here is that the wife is barren. And so we talked about this wife being um, connected to the at, at SDA church and, um, and a promise being given to the Adventist church that's going to be connected with 1989, the time of the end. So this is the repeat of history. Though she's barren, she's, barren, she's going to give birth to a son. Now, I put Samson here being born at 9-11. And um, so I've added some things here since yesterday. I spent a bit of time looking at this. Um, so we still have all these question marks in between in this story, uh, which we have to go through. And then um, I took this number, 4495, and I subtracted 777. And I got this number, 3718. And now 3718 is close to 2718, which is this number that we have for July 18, 2020. Um, that is the 18th day, 7th month, 20th year backwards. And then I thought about this, whether is this July 18, 2023 or July 18, 2030 that it's representing? Um, yeah, so the square is uh, 20, 20 million, 205,000 and, and, and 25. So yeah, so that's the square of 4495. <clears throat> um, yeah, if that's what you're asking. So I guess I could just put that in there, 4495 squared. Thanks, Angela. And um, you did a typo there, but that doesn't matter in the chat. Um, and then what I did is I, so I looked at this number, 3718, and I said, well, what if I counted from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 1991, and I um, counted the number of days to July 18, 2030. So uh, we have dates in 2030 that are marked that are symbolic dates, and July 18 would be a symbol. And that number of days would be 14,085. And that is uh, divided by 5, 2, 8, 1, 7. So we get uh, the July 18, uh, 20 date symbol connected to the July 18, 30 date. Now, um, so if we look at that period of time, um, that would be 10 years, right? If we're going to deal with, uh, July 18, 2020, and we don't know where we would put that in these lines. We haven't decided what these are, but July 18, 2030 as a symbol would be significant. So we're leaving it there for now, unless people have objections to this. So this is just 
tentative, right? We're, we're laying this out. And, and part of this, you know, when I'm, I keep thinking about how I'm writing this paper, um, that is the notes for the camp meeting are mostly going to be the diagrams. There isn't going to be tons of explanation other than uh, the different symbols. I'm not going to write it like a regular paper where I go through and explain everything. It's really going to be notes for the presentations. And so I'm trying to break it up into how many presentations I think that I'm going to do and, and take it one step at a time so that I cover each of these things. And then Iran's going to be presenting, you know, how we do this, how we do this mathematical uh, calculations, the different tools that we use so that people can practice these things um, and, uh, and understand what it is we're doing, why we, we take numbers and square them, or we look at the primes, and all this type of stuff, how we look at the symbols that are in these, and then really how we construct these lines, right? So um, sometimes these lines just fall into place very readily. Other times we struggle with them, and, and the reason we struggle could be just ourselves, not that it's any less evident than any other line. <clears throat> So when, when we look at, at these lines, some of these lines, we're going to notice things as we present them because we don't have all the answers to all of this yet. Um, but when we look at this number, this name Manoa, it gives us a lot of information. And some of it we understand and, and we know where to place it. And some of it we don't. And some of it we have ideas, but we're not certain about. Um, but we know that Manoa connects us to all these symbols. So Manoa connects us to the 65, right? As I said, the 187. And if you add the 252 or, or the 187 to the 65, you get the 252. And following that is 777. And that's the symbol, symbol of Lamech. Lamech is 18720. We also know that we have... Um, uh, connected to that 120 years. So there's lots of different symbols that come from Manoah, both in his name and in the Hebrew number, right? So it connects us to 2020 and to 525. That's the way I interpret um, the 20,205,000. We're just taking out the, the, the zero between um, uh, at the 5,000 and 25 at the end is just taking it as 525. Um, and then the 2020. So it's going to point us to 2020 at some point. Now, when I look at this line here, because we know we're zooming into uh, this time of the end. So what we've been doing is we look at this line. This is the line of Samson here that we had constructed. And... Um, so we're saying that this period of darkness here is going to be this line of Manoa, right? And so it's it's showing something that's happening in that period of darkness before 9-11. So 9-11 is the birth of Samson. Um, so I put 9-11 here as Samson being born as the third angel arriving. Yet a lot of these symbols are talking about things that are going to occur afterwards. So... I don't know if we really should put Samson being born then or Samson is going to be uh, the first angel arriving or the second angel arriving in this line because we already have a line of Samson, um, which includes these other dates like July 18, 2020, and we're having Samson as the birth um, at the time of the end, the birth of Samson marking the time of the end at 9-11. I don't know, right? So this is where... I don't have good answers to this at this point. But we take uh, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. The wife of Manoah is barren. Uh, we have the name of Manoah. We know he's from Zorah. And the thing about Zorah that's interesting is it's it's close to the number of days um, between... Um, 9-11 and July 18. 
it's just uh, four days short. So it would bring us to uh, July 14, 2020, if we just counted from 9-11, because it's 6881. And the number of days is 6885. Right, so... <clears throat> So how we would look at that, I don't know, but that's what we have with Zora. And and Zora means uh, like a, uh, a wasp or something like that, a hornet. So we could connect this to uh, FFA, to the School of the Prophets in some way. So if we look at Noah, he's from... Zora. Now he's of the Danites. Uh, so he's of the children of Dan. His wife's barren. But when we're taking the story and we're placing it here, we're placing it at the time of the end, 1989. So, I mean, in 1989, you know, the School of the Prophets doesn't exist, but Jeff is called at that time, right? So we have basically the call of Jeff. <clears throat> in 1989 and so so we know that his wife is barren and and the wife would refer to the Adventist church so the angel of the lord appears unto the woman and that's going to be judges 13:3 so obviously this is a woman that's chosen out of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So obviously all Seventh-day Adventists have this opportunity to hear this message. And Christ does appear to this church. Now, when we look at 1989, I mean, we always look at the fact that Jeff is there. But in 1989, in, in the late 1980s, uh, we have a lot happening in Adventism. Uh, George R. Knight published his first popular book which is um from 1888 to apostasy he published that in 1988 so it was the 100th anniversary of the minneapolis conference and george r knight uh, began his rise as this champion of uh historical revisionism taking uh, the torch from uh, leroy Froom and um uh so, so that happens in the late 80s. At the same time, we have the republishing of the books of Louis F. Weir, and that's going to be by Hans K. LaRondel. He's going to republish uh, the books that show 1989, and this is going to happen before 1989. But these books are republished, dealing with the King of the North, dealing with Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. And, and these were published like earlier in the 80s. I can't remember the, the year. But these book, were books I was reading in the 80s. And, and we had people uh, dealing with the repeat of history in the sense of prophecy being repeated. That is, there were people like uh, uh, Charles Wheeling who were uh, using some of the verses that Jeff was using later. Uh, so at this time... Uh, we have this message that's coming to this church, but the message is not well received, right? That is, there is, uh, there's a cross to bear, this Nazarite vow. And it, and it parallels uh, other stories, but the main story that we see here about this, that she's going to conceive and bear a son, is the parallel with the story of Christ, and so we can see that here, this is a woman being called, but this woman, it's not being called out of the Adventist church in the sense of, you know, leave her. There's nothing about that. But a message is coming to Adventism, a woman. And um, so those that are Adventists in the 1980s and 1989 are going to see this message and respond to it. Jeff will be one of those who responds, but he's going to be the main one. That is, he's the one that God has chosen. Now, you know, we know that Samson is a type of Christ, 
um, you know, I don't know how we would, you know, put Jeff in here as a person. I think that this is primarily about messages. Now we we know that this uh, drink, um, yeah. So it relates to the health message, including abstemiousness, right? Um, but I think primarily the application here is spiritual, in the sense that. Um, this drink, this wine, right, or strong drink, these are the doctrines of Protestantism. And so that the message here is that we need to learn to study God's word. We can't eat anything unclean. And this is a problem for Seventh-day Adventists because Adventists have been feeding in the trough of apostate Protestantism. We've been drinking their wine and eating their meat. And just like Daniel and his three companions, we have to make a vow that we're not going to eat the, eat of those things. Now, I'm going to say something that's rather strong here. Um, because I think that Adventists, um, we often just look at this as, oh, the Protestant you know, method of Bible study, and we're conservative Adventists and, you know, we believe in the King James Bible and we see that the, the Pope is the Antichrist, the Bible prophecy, the papacy. Um, and yet we have bought into the ideas and teachings of Protestantism in so many ways that we're unaware. And, and when I think about it primarily, it's it's the... Um, and, and I'm just going to say this, it's the conspiracy theories of Protestantism. Because what, what we believe that we're doing is we believe that we're okay. And this is what, when I talk about a conspiracy theory, I'm not saying that conspiracies don't exist or anything like that. They do. And we also know the ones that are revealed in God's word, dealing with the papacy. But I'm talking about all of the other things uh, that are connected with what we would call uh, the right with conservatism. So we're not talking about the liberal Protestant theology. We're talking about the conservative Protestant theology. And one of the things that's been a stumbling block to this movement has been this connection with conservatism. I'm a conservative. I believe all of you are conservatives, right? That is, we, we don't believe in government control. We don't believe in interference. We believe in the rights of the individual. Uh, we believe in the Constitution of the United States, even though I'm not American. I believe that that's founded upon biblical principles. And so it's easy to get caught up in all of these things that are of this world. Jesus says, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. But now my kingdom is not from hence. Right? And so to get caught up in the politics um, and what's happening in the world and to be angry about it and fearful about it, those are, those are a stumbling block for us in this movement. And I'm talking about myself personally. The conspiracy theories as well uh, feed into this. And the, one of the things that I really believe is that, that Satan has, he's going to get us either way, right? If he can, right? Um, and we need to focus upon Christ and what he wants us to do each day upon his word. We have to free ourselves from these uh, ideas that puff up, that make us think of ourselves as better than we are, and focus upon the truth, because the truth shows us that we're sinners, that we're not better than anyone else. And we're not going to be saved by knowing what's going to happen in this world. We're going to be saved by knowing Christ, by obeying him, by following him, 
And there's lots of things out there that can scare us in this world. And, um, and we can see the, the things behind them. So, you know, for instance, um, on Facebook, there is about this 15-minute cities. And we know where this comes from, World Economic Forum, right? We know what they want to do. They want to control us. But the question is, should we be fearful of these things? And the answer is no, right? Because is that our battle? Is our battle against flesh and blood? No. No. Our battle is against self. If there's any flesh and blood that our battle against is against, it's against ourselves. And we're not going to win that battle, right? This is what we saw from A.T. Jones in the 1893 General Conference Bulletin. We're not going to win that battle. This is Satan's kingdom. Right. And so when we look at this, this issue that exists within Adventism, why the ch church is barren, why it has not reflected the character of Christ. It's because we're of the world. We think we're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. But know us not that we're wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. That's us. That's Seventh-day Adventists. That's what we have inherited in becoming Seventh-day Adventists. And when we look at ourselves as better than others, we're in grave danger. So to me, this is what this story is talking about. This is the darkness that has existed in this movement ever since it came into being, because it's it's the darkness of Adventism. But it's it's this particular darkness, this barrenness that we can't conceive. That is, we don't have the seed in us of Christ. We've been feeding off the wrong table. We've been drinking the wrong drink, eating the wrong food unclean food and the wine of Babylon. That's what we've been feeding upon. And so we come to this commitment and this commitment, what's being offered to us is that this child that's going to be born in us, he has to be committed. This Nazarite vow. But when we look at the story of Samson, what we see is we see this unruly child growing into an unruly man. And that's us. But yet he's going to be victorious. So this promise, this period of darkness, this time of the end, uh, the, or this period that precedes the time of the end, but it's connected to the time of the end, to November 9th, 1989. This is this preamble to this line. This is describing this problem that exists in this movement. So <clears throat> let's look back at this line. We have this period of time, this 777 days. Now, um, there we go. <clears throat> when we think about this 777 days, we have it at the end, right? We're going to have 777 days. Uh, later, and that's that's why I think we have to reconstruct this line in some way. Um, I don't I don't know the answer to this line, but I do know we need to put nine eleven here. So so this line is a daily addressing this period of darkness that precedes nine eleven. But this line is going to go just like when we zoom into any other line. Um, yeah, so we have the 777 from Lamech. And I think what we have to do here is we have to put in 
this 777 days at uh, the beginning is also going to have to be reflected in the 777 days at the end. So we know we got Samson being born at 9-11, right? That's where we would normally put it. But we have to we have to take this out of here. That is, we're going to construct this line regarding this darkness. And, and I'm just not sure how to do it. All I know is that, um, that this 777 days has to be reflected here. However, we're going to do that. Now, maybe what we could do. Um, so I'm just going to borrow this. And I'm going to put it at the end. Now, normally we just take this 777 days and we're going to say here, well, this is November 9th. At 1989. And over here, we're going to have. Um, let's put this, and move this over. Um, you know, here we're going to have November 9th, 2019. Right. That's how we would do it. We'd put those 30 years in there. And um, so maybe we would put this here. I don't know what the answer is. Maybe that's better. I don't know. But we're going to have a 77, 777 here as well, somewhere, right? That's what I'm saying, whether that's right or not. But I'm saying that there's something about this structure that we need to, to recognize. Now, we have different 777-day periods. So, I mean, we do have the one that goes from November 9th, but we also have the one that goes from July 18th, and, or, or not July 18th, March 21st, 2021, to uh, May 13th, 2023. So March 21st, 2021, to May 13th, 2023. We have that 777 days. <clears throat> so I don't know if that's that's where that should be or not. I don't know. But I'm just saying that somewhere at the beginning of this line or at the end of the line, we're going to have this 777. Any other thoughts on this? Okay, Judges 13, 6 to 8 must be similar to Mary telling Joseph of her visit by Gabriel to Joseph and Joseph's reaction. Um, yeah. So we know there's that parallel there as well. Um, Manoah equals or is equivalent to Noah connected with Methuselah's 187 when he sired Lamech, right? The number of days between spring and fall equinoxes. Uh, 718, right? Methuselah lived 782 years after beginning Lamech. Another connection uh, to July 18. So that would be, uh, you know, there's no one in there, but we can see the connection there as well. Okay. So those, so Angela's reminding us of some of the, some of these symbols. And so we know that this, this barrenness, this inability to conceive that that what's going to be conceived in this promise is the character of Christ or the image of Christ. Now, here in Samson, we see it morally opposite. 
But that represents, I think, the humanity of Christ, our nature, the nature we have to overcome. But Samson is victorious in the end, which I think is the thing that we could look at in that story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's just so much here. Hmm. Any other thoughts? So, so we we're putting some of these things in our in our mind, reflecting on them. I'm looking at some of the math here. Okay, as a question. Yeah. Do verses 11 and 12 help to establish the arrival of the second angel's message? Okay, so in Judges 13, 11 and 12? Yes. Noah arose, went after the his wife, and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spaketh unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child and how shall we do unto him? So what is it you're seeing there? I recognize that we have a question. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the Hebrew that can be rendered, what shall be the manner of the child? But it's in the English, how shall we order the child? And then the next repeat is how shall, even though there's an, an added word here, we do unto him. But in the Hebrew, it's what shall be the manner, and then what shall be his work. So would that be considered as a doubling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't know if 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 that's going to be a doubling. I mean, we can say it's two different questions. I agree. Right. But um, it's the manner in how they're phrased. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, um, I'm just looking here at the Hebrew. I, I don't think in the Hebrew it comes across as two correct questions. Then how does it come across? Um, so if I was going to... Um, it's just basically... Um, you know... What is it that we are supposed to do in ordering the child, right? In 
you know, it's it's not really two questions. It is in the King James sort of broken as two questions. But it's not. There's just one interrogative. Um, right. That's going to be the word 4100. Ma. Right. And then it's going to say Haya. That is to be. What is to be. Um, uh, his and this word uh, mishpat, pretty uh, broad meanings. It's often used in the sense of justice or measure. Um, here they're going to translate it as as manner, right? What is the manner of the boy? And then uh, it has an and there, right? That's in uh, six six four six three nine is going to be. Uh, va maasa, and just that just means and the va the vav vav at the beginning, and um, basically his his activity his action. So it's 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 just saying, you know, how how are we going to deal with it? It's not it's not really two questions. Um. It's one question. But I, I just don't know about um, that being even even then the second the second angel arriving. This to me would be part of the first angel. Um, but but it, it's it's a good idea that we need to find where the second angel messages see the problem here is this is the period of darkness so this is the instruction that's given to to adventism if we're saying the time of the end in in the line of samson is 9 11 this is everything that precedes 9 11 but yet in this line we're going to have 9 11 right we're not going to have this line end at 9 11 I mean, that would be my natural inclination. But here there's just too much uh, showing that, that in this history of darkness prior to 9-11, um, there's this problem of the character of Christ. But it's going to lay out a message that's going to be connected to 9-11. That is, in a sense, it's a zoom into 9-11, right? Uh, is that the best way to look at it? Right? Because when we look at the line of Samson, we're going to start it at 9-11. So we're saying that this period of darkness that's here that we say is 13, verse 1 to 23, 24 is going to be the birth of Samson. But we're saying we're zooming into that time of the end, and we're going to have a line that's going to include 9-11, and events after 9-11. And we've done this with other lines. But in this story, Samson isn't born until the end. So I think what we have to do over here is we have to put 11-9 somewhere. Right? You understand what I'm saying? So 11.9 either needs to be here, that is November 9th, 2019, with the 777 days here, or it even could be here. So one of these is 11.9. Right now, if we put, uh, of course, we know we have 777 days before 11:9. So, so this is either 11:9, and this is December 25th, 2021. Right, right. So either this is, um, 
923.17. Right. Going to 11.9, or it's 11.9. Going to uh, December 25th, 2021. So those, those are two options here. But I want to have that 777 days at the end. And part of that has to do with Manoa and, and that we have the 777 days at the beginning. So, and we, we know that we connect 9-11 and 11-9. So, we normally say, well, Samson's born at 9-11, right? That's how we have it in the line of Samson. But Samson is born here at 11-9, right? So you still would put Samson being born here, right? It's not 9-11, it's 11-9. Or or here, so we'll just put it there for now. Somehow this has to do with Samson's birth, this 777. I mean, I would be inclined to, to use the, the bottom one here. So I would do this. That to me would make the most sense. And that this, this here about uh, the promise to Manoah this message at the beginning is going to be reflected at the end. And that this is 777 days at the end um, connects with 11.9 in Any thoughts about this? Well, I think I understand the logic behind having a 777 associated at the beginning and at the end. Mm -hmm. I'm still <clears throat> puzzling over how we're going to be able to establish this more clearly for the arrival on the second angel. Right. So, so when it comes to the arrival of the second angel, if we look at this story... Uh, we do have other things that would, uh, because we have to figure out where the arrival of the second angel is in this line. That is, this line is going to have a second angel arriving, but we don't know what the event is yet. Right? So we, we haven't put a, a, you know, some date on that line. Now I'm saying it's not 9-11. 9-11 is part of the first angel in this line. Um, so there's something there's something that happens between 911 and 119 that would mark this second second angel. So we need to figure out what that is. Like we need to understand this darkness particularly has to do as we said 
with the character of Christ, because this child that's going to be born is going to be a type of Christ. And in this line, this line of darkness, it's going to show that that, that child is born at eleven nine, right? So when I, when I drew the line there and I put either December, I'm saying it's that seven, seven, seven days at the end that's marking the birth of this child, right? So really in our line, we know 9-11 and 11-9 are the same way mark, right? So, so we're going to have a second angel arrive, but we need to figure out what that message is. So the first message is regarding the birth of this child. The second message can't be about the birth of the child, right? It's going to have to do with this message regarding um, this offering and this name of, of, of Christ, right? Palmoni, right? So we're going to see that Palmoni is going to be connected. And I think that this is the second angel's message in this line. So when does Palmoni come into play in our history, in this movement? So we're going to say that all of the first message is about this character of Christ that needs to be born in us. It's going to be empowered at 9-11, right? September 11th, 2001. And then a second message is going to arrive in connection with this movement, but it's going to be connected to Palmoni. And then when we have Palmoni introduced here, he's going to say his name, right? And I, and I just don't understand why we didn't have this drawn out as a line. Like I'm, I'm going to, I'm trying to go back through the videos, but there's so many of them where we address Samson and figure out, did we draw a line at some plate point and it just got lost? Like it never got saved on my computer or something. Because I remember going through this in detail, and we seem to have uh, way marks. We didn't just have chapter 13 as a period of darkness and leave it at that. So, for instance, um, he's going to have this name revealed, and then we're going to have a, a flame go off the altar and ascend towards heaven. Right, that's 13 verse 20. And then they're going to fall on their faces to the ground. So what does that remind us of? What is this experience that Manoah and his wife are having? When the, this... Marah, the Marah experience. Right. So, so this has to be connected to the second angel, right? The Marah experience is the looking glass experience. The Mare would be connected more with the second angel. Okay. So this is, but wouldn't this be the empowerment of the second angel's message? Well, if we go back to prior conversations, mm -hmm. the Mare experience is the vision that is true. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I always get confused because we're not pronouncing these words correctly, but because we have Mara and Mara are, are what it is in Hebrew. So we have a, we don't have an A sound in Hebrew. So we have an A and an A. So the A is which one? So what are you saying? Which one is which? Well, all right. If we were based on, on your question, if I was to go to Daniel 8. Yeah. Yeah. 
Then I went to Daniel 8, 26. Okay. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be the Chazon. And the, the, the second okay. one, the first one is the Mara. The Mara, okay. Yeah. So you you pronounce that Mara? That's the way I had been pronouncing it, yes. Okay. Yeah, because they don't have an A sound in Hebrew. That's, okay. Right. So Mara and Mara. So Mara is the looking glass. All right. Right. Okay. So, um, so we just even forget the Hebrew. Just say you know the twenty three hundred day vision and 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 uh, the looking glass vision. We could do it that way. Okay. <clears throat> That's why when I was referring to it as the vision that is true. That's the 2300 days. Correct. Yeah. That's the evening and morning. Days. Okay. Right. So, so here, what they're experiencing is the revelation of Christ. That's the looking glass, the Mara. Right? Right. Okay. Now, um, we also have that. Daniel chapter 10. Right? Is that where you're going to have it as well? Just a moment. Correct, Daniel ten one. Yeah. Okay. And well, ten one is going to be. Um, that's going to be the vision of the evenings and mornings, the Mara. And then in ten verse seven, right? I Daniel alone saw the vision. That's going to be the Mara. Right. Okay. Correct. That's going to be feminine. Correct. Four, seven, five, eight. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, um, so we're saying that 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 vision in ten verse seven, one of the things we see is what symbol. What's 10 verse 7? 10th day of the seventh month. Right. So we have the 10th day of the seventh month. That's the third angel's message. Right. We agree is the Mara, the looking glass. Right. Okay. <clears throat> because as that as that portion of Daniel 10 continues, of course. Daniel is left alone. The others have left him. So he, he is mm -hmm. solitary in seeing this vision. Right. Okay. So if we, we look at this story, we're going to say that um, they're going to have this vision. It's going to be a Mara vision. Right. So this would be connected with the third angel is what you're saying. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, so. So when he. So when we have the calling after the name, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? Um, so if we're going to put. This, where would we put put this in our lines? Because when does Palmoni become prominent in our lines? I mean, we have Palmoni introduced in 2014, just in in 
in the understanding of Ezra 7 9, right? Correct. Okay. So when we get Ezra 7 9 in the movement, even though it came in 2013, the, the question, it's not really answered and presented to the movement until uh, uh, Noel presents it, right? So he's going to present that at that camp meeting. Um, and, and it's going to be later. So that summer, Jeff is, is going to come to Alberta. He's going to invite me. And then on October, I'm going to present uh, the chronology. And, and, and what's happening during that time, too? So the interesting thing, at least from my, from my perspective, is um, now I'm not officially in the movement, per se. Like, I'm not anybody in the movement. Just happened to be uh, one of the people following the movement. And I'm studying all through that history, but I'm not particularly studying. Um, most of my study time is independent study. That is, I'm studying chronology. I'm trying to sort out the 2520. And I'm keeping my ear to the ground and seeing what's happening in the movement. And, and my study ends up paralleling what's happening in the movement. That is, the things that I'm finding all become things that are being studied in the movement. I'm, I'm finding these things out. The movement then is talking about them, even though we're not really communicating with each other for the most part. That doesn't really happen, uh, you know, until till later. I don't know if even if you put 2016, maybe in 2017 when I presented at the School of the Prophets, the structure of prophetic chronology. I do present at some camp meetings, but... In a sense, we're running parallel with each other during this time because people in the movement aren't aware of me. Jeff is um, and, and the odd person. But um, what, what's, what's going to happen is it's all going to come together in 2018 when you know, we get time. So we have June 9th, for instance. And I, I don't know, you know where where we put where we put this all i know is that we're leading up to november 9th whether we we're going to end on november 9th as the third angel arriving or december 25th 2021 whatever that date is um it's going to be connected to this mara right not the mar a mar a Right, so you have the mar a, that's the vision of the 2300 days, and then the mar a, the feminine form. Now, a lot of people say mar a, right? You know, and I've done that too because other people do. But it, there is no a sound in Hebrew. <clears throat> it's mar a. So we got a mar a vision and a mar a vision. And um, we're saying that the mar, the mar a, the the vision that is true, the vision of the evenings and mornings, we're saying it's connected with the second angel? Yes. Okay. Because it's, it's part of the second angel's message declaring October 22, 1844. And then on October 22, the third angel arrives, and that's going to be the message connected with the, uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right. Okay. okay, so that makes sense. Now, when we put it in this line, it's not going to be because this line that we're drawing is not um, its not the whole line, right? It's just a line. So um, it's a zoom into this period of darkness that precedes 9-11. But it's going to have 11-9 in it. And so we just could say, see, see, the problem is here, the empowerment. If we understand what the second angel is, I think maybe that's the problem that we're going to have. To, to address what is the second angel's message in regard to this particular line right so the first angel has to do about this 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 um the barrenness of this church the seventh day adventist church it's going to be barren and a message comes to this church in 1989 it's the message of Christ. Christ comes to this church 
and gives a message. Because this church is barren. And it tells it what it needs to do. And the church isn't going to listen. Right? At least the bigger body of the church. But, but this barren woman is going to have this image of Christ born in her. Right? She is going to conceive. And that's what these lines are representing. Our lines are representing the work that Christ is doing in his church. His church that is barren. But in this line particularly, it's addressing this movement. Right? But it is starting with this barrenness that has to do with Adventism. That is the thing that we inherited from Adventism. Which is uh, that we think we're better than we are. We're barren. We don't have Christ's character. And yet we think we do. Right? We're laid to see it. This is what we inherited. And we have this 777 days from 1989 to December 25th, 1991, to see the fall of the Soviet Union in action, to see Bible prophecy being fulfilled, to see what Louis F. Weir prophesied you know, in the 1950s that was going to happen. We see it fulfilled before our very eyes, and yet the church... All they see this is, oh, the Soviet Union fell. Now we can go and do gospel work in Russia, right? But they don't see it as a fulfillment of prophecy. Correct. Which to me was remarkable, right? But then we get to 9-11, and, and definitely the church does not see 9-11 as a fulfillment of prophecy. In fact, if you think that it's a fulfillment of prophecy... Uh, you're very mistaken. It wasn't really an opposition to anybody believing that 1989 was a fulfillment of prophecy. It just wasn't a big issue. But 9-11 became a bigger issue. Because initially, people saw, well, this is testimonies 9-11. Jeff didn't even see that till later. But I knew about it right away. Because people were pointing it out. And so we have testimonies 9-11. You know, you look at the buildings, the great buildings of New York falling down. And um, so some people noticed that. Jeff noticed it later. Somebody pointed it out to him quite a bit later after he had already taken 9-11 uh, as uh, the second woe. Or the, uh, pardon me, the third woe. And um, connected it to the second woe in August 11th, 1840. <clears throat> So, so if we look at this line, we have the 777 days. It's formalized with the fall of the Soviet Union. But then it's empowered at 9-11. Right? So in this line, 9-11 is much more representative of August 11th, 1840. Right? It's the empowerment of the first angel. Now, so we, we have to say, well, where does the second angel arrive? Now, this, this line is going to lead to Samson's birth, but it has all of these events that precede this, right? This story of what happens. First, they want to know the name, right? And we have to figure out um, where that inquiry fits. Is that just uh, the second angel arriving? They say his name is secret, and if that is the case, what date do we place there? And then where is that formalized? Right? And then where is that empowered, which I would put at uh, November 9th, 2019, and then that 777 days is going to lead to the end of that. So we're just saying that whole 777 days is Samson's birth. It's the second angel empowered to the third angel arriving. That's that's how I'm looking at it right now. Um, so when we have uh, the second angel arriving, we're going to have one of these dates, either 2014 dealing with uh, uh, um, 
uh, Ezra 7 9, its formalization. Um, where would we place that? Are we going to place it at uh, um, some other place, like like um, September 23rd? Are we going to place it in 2018, October 13th, 2018? Okay, so let's do it this way. If we say that this is um, this way mark here is going to be um, we'll put 6, 22, uh, 14, right? So it's going to be this is going to be Ezra 7, 9. In 2017, I'm going to do a series of studies at the School of the Prophets. And, and this series of studies is going to begin on September 11, 17. Okay. Oops, I put 19 there. Now, this September 11th, 2017, this is going to be Ezra 7 to 10. That is what, what's going to be presented there is lots of things, but mostly it's this study on the three decrees, right? And especially the third decree dealing with the connection between 457 BC and 1844, right? So we're going to deal with all these symbolic uh, structures, 107 days and 54 days and 54 days. And, um, and, and so it's really an expansion of what happened with Ezra 7-9, where we have the first day of the fifth month. Now, in 2017, we're going to have all of this, but we're also going to have this symbol of July 18, right? So out of that is going to come the 187 as the prediction before midnight, right? That's that's what's going to happen in 2017. Now, I put the September 11th date there. It's going to be on September 23rd that I'm then going to point out the 187 days as the prediction before midnight at Lambert Church. But that's just an extension of these studies, right? So it's going to end in that um, that study. And, and I'm not 100% certain about the September 11th date, but I'm fairly certain that that's when I began my studies. I have to look that up. But I'm putting September 11th there. I know in 2018, I present on September 11th. Um, but I think it was in 2017 as well. But we could put September 23rd, uh, 2017 as well. But I'll, I'll just leave that there for now. So now we have the dates here, and we can see what the second angel is. It's going to relate to uh, uh, this palmonite. Now, um, the empowerment here, so if we're looking at this story, and we want to put these verses here, um, we're going to say that, you know, the first one is the period of darkness, verse one and two. And then you're going to have uh, this uh, section about the woman, right? And, and Manoah, right? Now, they're not going to know the angel's voice or the angel's name, pardon me. And, and then they're going to know the name, right? Now, the knowing of the name, we're going to say, is the introduction of Palmoni. But then we're also going to have these, uh, so all this instruction goes on, right? It's going to be in verse 18 that we get that his name is secret. And then we're going to have this offering. So can we connect this offering 
Like, and, and what we say, well, this is, you know, this is the third angel's message, right? But we're going we're gonna to put it earlier. So I don't know how we, we do this because we're going to have all this offering that happens, right? They're going to present this offering. So how do we place this offering in this story? So where we so we we have these way marks, can we match these way marks up with these verses? Because if we want to have the Marah vision, the looking glass, we want that to be the third angel's message, we would normally place that in, you know in this line that we have here. Um we would want to place this at December 25th, 2021, right? Third angel arriving. But but it's Samson's birth that's going to be the third angel arriving. So we're just going to say that this uh, asking of the name, that it's secret, has to be the second angel's message in this line. It has to be Ezra 7-9. And the offering would have to be September in 2017, or something to that effect, right? Is this making sense to people? So, so we'd have to place this as, so I'm putting that there, but I'm also going to put, what is it, 13 verse 18? Is Palmoni Oops. There we go. Does that make sense? It looks logical. Okay. And then this here would be this offering. Now, why would we connect this offering here? Uh, and I've just got to put the verse there too. <clears throat> so that's going to be... Um, Verse 19, um, verse 19 and 20, so that's just going to be the offering the self, it's, itself, um, or maybe just verse 19, because then you're going to have, it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. It's interesting there if you take a Marah 4759 and you multiply uh, the, those numbers together. Four times seven times five times nine is 1260. Right. Yeah. So how would that help us in this line? Because this line is leading to the time of the end. Right. So, um, but it's what it's also doing is, isn't it uh, leading to a gathering rather than a scattering? Yeah, it's, it's referring to the end of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we didn't put the verses here, which we need to do. We need to put which verses these are. Um, so this has to do with that first message about ordering the child. Right. Um, so with the message arrives at 1989 here, um, when the angel talks with Manoah's wife. 
So that's going to be uh, the message arriving. It's going to be formalized when the husband uh, uh, hears the message and then uh, empowered when he uh, um, inquires, right? So just putting those verses down. Um, so the angel is going to appear to the woman. That's verses three and four and five. So that's 13, three, four, and five. So three to five. Then she's going to tell her husband. That's going to be 13, verse six to. Six to seven. And then he's going to entreat of the Lord. That's going to be uh, eight. Um, that's going to include the whole uh, discussion. Let me see. So Manoah entreated of the Lord, and so the the angel's going to come to Manoah's wife again, right? So I don't know if we would put all of this here, 8, 9, 10, then Manoah arises, 11, because it's going to repeat basically the idea, and then he's going to receive this instruction. Um, so however we divide this, we could we could just divide this first part. We could extend that um, because Manoah himself is not going to talk to the angel um, until verse eleven, right? So maybe we could put six to ten as this first section, and then eleven. to 17 or something like that. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. But basically we have uh, the angel comes to the woman first. She's going to tell her husband there's going to be this interaction. This is going to be the formalization of this message because the message is being shared, right? But then it's going to be empowered. So Manoah himself is going to be talking with this angel and receive this instruction. And then in verse 18, he's going to be told the name. Because here they don't know the name, right? She's going to say, we don't know the name. Um, and we could say that the empowerment also could be including knowing the name, but I don't know. I think here in this part, we're going to put that when they're told the name, that it's secret, that's going to be the arrival of the second angel. And that's formalized in 2017. So you have 2014, 2017. Um, and this, this all makes sense now. You know, as we put this together, this makes sense to me. Is it making sense? Now, there's more to this because there are some symbolic numbers that we need to tie into these stories. And we've looked at some of them. So that's what we're going to have to do tomorrow. We're going to have to finish this up. <clears throat> you know, we have like eight or nine presentations left to get through uh, and sort out these charts. So, you know, we can't spend tons and tons of time on this. Okay, so which, on, on the rest of this, what other charts are we going to need to address? Um, 
so we have uh, the line of Samson itself, which we have here, uh, we're really going to look at when we put the two lines together. So that's going to be here. So we have the line of Samson. This was our final work that we had done on Samson. Right. And the line of Samson and Delilah. Right. Right. And so they had these connections uh, between 9-11 and April 22nd, 2023. Mm -hmm. And so we... We have some things that we have to look at there. We have um, uh, seven days and a seven weeks that's connected to uh, the line of Samson. We have, because um, Samson's going to go from 9-11 to 11-9 in July 18, December 25th, right? So you can see this is the line we have to complete. That's It's two basic lines, line of Samson and the line of Samson and Delilah. And then, of course, um, this line of Manoa. So there's three basic lines. But there was a lot of uh, things that we just have to look at that we hadn't looked at. Um, you know, some of these spans of time, some of the symbols dealing with the Hebrew uh, definitions and strongs, the numbers connected with that. Um, we had connected within these lines, we had some lines that were uh, structured that we didn't have like in this manner. We just had, you know, these, these types of lines. Um, so we have to decide what to do with them. So, yeah, so we got, um, and then, uh, and as we know, uh, uh, next week we're we're not we're going to have a shortened week because we're not going to have a study on the second and third, just the fourth, fifth, and sixth. So we're going to have three studies next week, and then we have um, um, a whole week. Then let me see, not even a whole week. So we've got what? One, two, three. So maybe eight more studies, nine more studies. Whether we're going to the 12th or the 13th of July, and then we have to take that last week off before the camp meeting. Because to get all the notes together uh, for the camp meeting, to get them all organized, printed, published, so people have the notes, that's going to be... What's going to be done once Stephen gets here? <clears throat> and I'm moving right now, too, so I've been spending a lot of time moving. But, uh, <clears throat> okay. So any other questions? Not for me at the moment. Okay. okay. Well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the studies. We just ask that you can continue to teach and lead. Help us as we approach this camp meeting to be prepared. Uh, I know, Lord, that um, I need to get an email out uh, with, uh, with all the details again, asking people to let me know if they're coming. And we pray that your angels can guide and direct and remove hindrances for those that desire to come. And forgive us for our sins, Lord. You know how little we trust in you and how we trust in ourselves more. We just pray, Lord, that we can learn to distrust self and, um, and that we can uh, allow your Holy Spirit to work in our lives and the lives of those around us. Be with us throughout this day. May your angels watch over us, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.